What's up guys and welcome back. In this tutorial we're going to be going over the switch statement. So what I've written here is an if statement that outputs the value of an integer. And as you can see with just a couple of if conditions it's got quite complicated. So what we're going to do is try and simplify this with the switch statement. So first of all I'm going to get rid of this and we're going to type switch oh, let's indent it a bit. I'm going to put the value that we're going to be comparing. So in this case, x. Now we want to compare it. Now we want to say what happens if x equals 1. So we're going to put case and put 1. And now we're going to say what happens. So sys out, I'm going to say x is 1. Then what I have to do after this is put break. And I'll tell you why in a moment. Oh. And so let's put another case in there. So case, if x equals two, I'm gonna say the, uh, the, I'm gonna output that x equals two. And then just in case x isn't one or two, I'm gonna put a default value in. I just put in default and say sys out, I don't know what x is. So this is very much like an if else statement. What it's going to do is say if x is 1, output x equals 1. Else if x equals 2, output x equals 2. And else output I don't know what x is. So let's just add a break at the end there. So if we run this, you can say x equals 2. So it's executed this part of code, part of the code. So if we don't put break in here, it's just gonna keep going through this statement. So if I take it out of here, get rid of that line, put x equals to one and run this, you can see that it said x equals one and x equals two. Uh, so what it's done is gone in, executed this statement, and then gone and executed this statement before breaking. So that's why we need to put a break in every case statement. So that's it for if statements. In the next tutorial, we're going to start looking at arrays. If you're liking this series, please like this video and subscribe.